Dr. Joe Dispenza is a New York Times bestselling author, researcher, lecturer, and corporate consultant. He's on a mission to uncover the secret behind spontaneous remissions across all illnesses through neuroscience, epigenetics, and quantum physics. Through his research, Dr. Dispenza has come to the realization that our thoughts and beliefs create our reality. He speaks about this in regards to his analysis of the brain-body connection during the altered state of stress. Living in stress is living in survival, and stress is when your brain and body are knocked out of homeostasis. Stress is when your brain and body are knocked out of balance. The stress response is what the body innately does to return itself back to balance. The problem is, is that if you keep turning on that fight or flight system, you keep turning on that emergency system, um, you'll actually cause people to stay out of balance and that imbalance becomes the new balance and they're headed for some type of disease, some type of breakdown. No organism can tolerate emergency mode for an extended period of time. And when you're in survival and that primitive system is switched on, it's really about the self. Uh, when you're in survival, you have to take care of yourself. So. Um, the emotions of anger and hostility and aggression and competition and frustration and resentment and envy and jealousy and insecurity and fear and anxiety and hopelessness and powerlessness and depression and pain and suffering, guilt and shame are all derived from the hormones of stress and psychology calls them normal human states of consciousness. Those are altered states of consciousness. And when we're in that state, when we're living in survival, we experience separation. We, we divide in, uh, in, in a lot of ways. And so there's biology that goes along with that. And um, the, the hormones of stress heighten the senses and cause us to become materialists. And, and now when we're in lack or separation, we force outcomes, we control outcomes, we fight for outcomes, we compete for outcomes, we manipulate outcomes. Uh, in a lot of ways, we, we turn into a more of a primitive self. So. 75 to 90 percent of every person that goes to a healthcare facility in the Western world goes in because of psychological or emotional stress. That's eight or nine out of ten. And, and emotional stress and psychological stress are the ones that tend to be the most harmful. Because if it's not T-Rex that's chasing you, but it's your coworker in the next cubicle, what was once very adaptive becomes very maladaptive. And, and the rush of those adrenal hormones become kind of addictive to people and they use the problems they use the conditions in their life to reaffirm their addiction to that emotion they need their enemy to feel hatred and and if their enemy died they'd they'd still feel hatred or they'd find another one uh, they need the bad relationship they need the bad job in order to feel and that's why it's hard to change and people become addicted to the life they don't even like and when you overcome the emotion you're free from the past you can see it from a greater level of consciousness. But how do we overcome this emotion? The answer Dr. Dispenza believes is meditation. Meditation allows us to become grounded in the present moment. It enables us to break free of negative thought patterns and beliefs and create a new reality. Through the lens of neuroscience, Joe explains how meditation can have positive effects in your brain. It's meditation. It's finding the present moment, it's getting into the unknown, it's getting beyond myself, disconnecting from my body, getting beyond any thought of anyone or anything, getting beyond time, moving beyond space and time. It turns out when you focus on nothing, there are so many amazing things that happen to your brain. I've seen the scans over and over again. There's this thing in the brain called modularity. And when we're living uh, by the hormones of stress, you switch on that fight or flight nervous system and, and the rush of those chemicals causes us to become alert, to become aroused. And we narrow our focus on the material world. And so when you're not able to control everything in your life and you can't predict everything in your life, you start shifting your attention to everyone and everything, every person, every object, every place. We've all had that experience when we're under stress. And Every one of those people, those objects, those things, those places has a neurological network in the brain. So like a lightning storm in the clouds, the brain begins to fire out of order, very incoherently. It becomes modulated or compartmentalized. It's a house divided against itself and those individual compartments don't talk to the rest of the brain. And we tend to get 
over-focused. You never notice when you're under stress, you're obsessing about something, you're over-focusing about something, you're overthinking something, you're over-analyzing, you're driving your brain higher and higher into higher states of arousal, high beta brainwave patterns. We discovered that if you teach a person to go from a narrow focus on something physical, something material, and broaden their focus, open their awareness and put their attention on space, on nothing, and create what's called a divergent focus, the act of sensing and no longer analyzing thinking begins to slow the brain waves down from that beta brain wave state to a low level beta and then all of a sudden to alpha. If they keep doing it, sensing space tends to cause those different compartments that were modulated, divided, to begin to synchronize. And what sinks in the brain actually links in the brain. So the brain starts firing in a more holistic state. In other words, every single area of the brain is resonating at the same frequency. And now the brain is functioning as one neurological network instead of individuals. And that kind of holism, that kind of order feels really good. It feels really good. And so people practice slowing their brain waves down, not only to get beyond the analytical mind, but to cause the brain to fire in a more coherent way. And if we're going to have a clear intention about what we want, the more coherent the brain, the clearer the intention. So we've seen in seven days, even in four days, these dramatic changes in the levels of coherence and order that take place in the brain. The brain's firing in a more holistic state. That's when the person notices the change in their anxiety and the depression and their PTSD, whatever it is, there's more order in the brain. The act of focusing on nothing and opening your awareness to space creates that kind of amazing change. Meditation can certainly open us up to the most blissful side of reality, or one might argue, a more accurate side of reality. Dr. Dispenza has a strong belief that our current perception of reality is highly inaccurate. In fact, he speaks of realms beyond space and time that our senses are not capable of perceiving. Although through different systems in the brain, he believes it is possible for us to tap into those realities. I, I have a very strong belief that the probability of us seeing the truth in reality is zero. I think that we perceive less than 1% of reality. The brain is missing out on a lot of data. And I think that we should never exclude ourselves <laughs> from the unknown. You know, I think there's a whole part of the unknown self that, that we're unaware of that that I, that I think exists beyond linear uh, time and space. And I, and I do believe that, that it's real. Yeah, I think it's a realm beyond space and time that, that I think, uh, you know, your eye right now is perceiving a very small spectrum of frequency, the visible light. It's a very tiny slice in the electromagnetic uh, spectrum. And that visible light, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, violet, is, is actually uh, bouncing off of the slowest and most stable form of energy called matter. And that gives us this perception of separation, right? Well, that small spectrum is less than 1% of what we actually can perceive. So I think that our senses plug us into reality, into three-dimensional reality. But I think there are realities that exist beyond space and time that we're unaware of. That we can tap into? Yeah, yeah, I do. And I think there are latent systems in the brain that once activated allows the brain to transduce that energy, that frequency into profound uh, information. Do psychedelics drug, drugs work in, in that? Well, I think psychedelics uh, give a person a perception of reality that's beyond three-dimensional reality. We're discovering that the nervous system makes its own pharmacy of psychedelics. In fact, we have really recent data that shows that um, many people that have a mystical experience in our work that have fMRIs uh, look like they're on psilocybin. And yet your nervous system's making that natural chemical endogenously. There's a tiny little gland in the back of your brain called the pineal gland. And the pineal gland has tiny little crystals inside of it that are stacked up on top of each other, rhombohedron in shape. And that little tiny uh, gland acts like a radio receiver for electromagnetic frequencies. And when those crystals be can, can become activated, uh, like a radio receiver, they can pick up frequencies 
that are beyond your senses, the quantum. And they can transduce, it's called a transducer, it can transduce that frequency like a TV antenna into profound imagery, a very full on sensory experience without your senses. I think it only takes one mystical moment, one transcendental moment for us to realize that um, we're missing out on a little bit of reality. And thanks to people like Dr. Joe Dispenza, more people can experience those one mystical moments. Throughout his work, Dr. Dispenza explains how stress can affect both our brain and our body. He describes the science of how meditation can treat negative emotions. And finally, by taking meditation a step further, he explains how we are able to tap into a reality that expands beyond space and time. <laughs>